Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is Kev from Kev's Artwork and Portraits and today I want to talk to you a little bit about paper. Um, what can I say about paper? Um, it's white. Now, <laughs> jokes aside, um, there's a lot of questions that float around online about paper. Um, quite a lot of discussions always come up in regards to um, what kind of paper is the best for what kind of media and, uh, and it's always a question that I'm asked and I just thought I'd do a little video to give you guys a little rundown of my opinions of papers that I like, papers that you might want to try, you know, and some of the effects and just a little bit of background about paper that you may not know. Some of you might might be thinking, oh, I know all this, why do I have to watch this video? But, you know, stick with it. There might be a few things that you might, uh, you might find out. But we all know what it's like when you go into your local art store or into a local art supplier and you confront with you know, stacks and stacks of different brands and thicknesses and grades and hot presses and cold presses and, you know, um, watercolour paper and toned hands and and you feel like you're lost in a mountain of paper and you don't know what to do, what choices to make. You know, it's like an endless mountain of paper that you feel you have to climb in order to reach the one that you feel that you might want to use. But um, what I'm going to do in the video is just... I've picked out a few papers that I like um, and a few that have been rated highly by other artists. So it's not a top 10, it's not a top 5, it's just a handful of papers I think you guys should give a chance. Or if you see them in your shop, you know, or online, or you come across them, pick them up and give them a test. You know, sometimes in your local suppliers, they may let you test a square, they may have an old pad that might be a bit damaged that you can test a piece out on you know and just see how you like it but um we're getting to the the first one and um let me, let me know at the end what you think and uh if you have any recommendations for paper for me to try put them in the comments so here we go so the first paper i'd like to talk to you guys about is the stonehenge range um it's a legion paper i tried this a few times i had it in warm white i wasn't keen on it i must admit it's it's a, it's a highly rated paper don't get me wrong um lots of artists use it they do it in um, a watercolor paper they do it in different tans they do it in high white they do it in cold presses hot presses for watercolor paper they do a good range i just wasn't too keen on the gsm the pad i bought it was only a 90 gsm paper <clears throat> and it was a smooth and I thought it'd be ideal for A3 work so that's what I originally bought it for um, I've got to admit after doing a couple of portraits on it and um, realising it wasn't quite as thick as I would have liked I did end up gifting it to my children and they uh, they used it up very 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 quickly um, it's not overly expensive I picked up my pad I think it was about £9 it wasn't it didn't break the bank but you can't always judge a paper on price because some other papers that I've bought um I, I bought one before it was uh it was like a hobby craft paper from the works it was a, a UK shop called the works and it was about 3 pound 50 and it was 150 gsm and it was extre extremely smooth paper and it was fantastic and I've done numerous portraits on that paper and it doesn't cost anything it's it's so cheap so price doesn't necessarily equal quality but with the Stonehenge, I, I was I was a little disappointed with it. So if any of you are thinking about trying it, just be a bit wary that have a look at the thickness of the paper. Think in your mind, what am I going to be using it for? What do I need it to do? What are the requirements I'm going to get from the paper? And am I going to be happy with it? So just bear in mind, you may not get what you're hoping for with the Stonehenge paper. Up next, we have the Rolls-Royce, the Mercedes, the Ferrari of papers. In a lot of people's opinion, the Strathmore, Bristol Board, you know, it is one of the best papers money can buy. And I've used a few sheets. I haven't bought a pad before. Um, I have a friend, he was a, he was a graphic designer. I had a few sheets off of him before in the past. But I think I was a little bit too sort of naive to realise the difference in papers at the time. Because it was before I got back into art more. 
but they do it in a few different ranges. They do it in tone tans, like the Stonehenge. They do it in hot presses. They do watercolors. They do a good range. They do a fantastic range of paper. Um, you got to sort of grade it on. In my opinion, they do it in a two hundred, a three hundred, a four hundred, and then the top, the top money goes on a five hundred series. And I personally feel think the difference between the 200s to the 500s you know being in the shop and flicking through them and feeling them it is there is a drastic difference the higher you go in the series and i don't know whether they've done that on purpose so if you were like um if you were at school say and you were doing your gcse's or you're doing your a levels or you're doing some kind of exams at school and you were an artist and your parents say bought you the 200 series that might be perfect for the kind of art that you're doing and for the skill level that you are. But once you leave and you practice and you start moving up in, up in the levels and you start improving and your ability starts changing, you may feel that you want to go up and um, sort of spend that little bit extra and try and see if the paper makes a difference. More often than not, it does. Quite a lot of people don't realise that paper choices is such a, such a difference when it comes to your work. Um, I'm going to be doing a video next week in regards to high quality paper versus your cheap standard copy paper that you put in your printer at home. So I'm going to be doing identical drawings on both. I'm going to be doing a drawing on a on a Canson 200 GSM. I'm going to, going to be doing a drawing on some very flimsy copy paper. And I'm going to see the differences and I'm going to explain the problems that I've encountered. But definitely Bristol... Strathmore Bristol Board, I mean, they do, they, they're they making a lot of money, let's put it that way. So they're either ripping people off and providing not a great paper, or their paper is fantastic. Like I said, I haven't actually used much of it before. So I, I would love, in the comments, some artists to tell me their experiences with Strathmore, and is it worth the money? Because some people say, oh, it's absolutely worth the money, yeah, you definitely have to buy it. And then some people, hmm, yeah, not so much. Like I said, it's personal opinion. Let me know. Right, up next we have the Worcestershire A2 High White. Um, I absolutely love this paper. This is one of my favourite papers. Um, I use three different ones. I use the Hobbycraft one, like I said just now. I use the Canson, and I use the Worcestershire. Um, they do it in... A5, A4, A3, A2, A1, and they also do A0 on a roll. Um, I haven't tried the A0 yet, and that's a little bit big for my table currently. Um, I'd have to wall mount it if I was going to do it, but then I'd have to obviously purchase a board and then wall mount the board and tape the, you know, and it's just, I haven't got the room currently. What I like about this paper is its smoothness. Um, a lot of people say, oh yeah, this paper is incredibly smooth. It's smooth, but it's also, it takes pencil really, really well. Um, it builds up layers really, really well. Um, it takes darks really, really well. Um, the tooth of the paper, even though it takes a lot of graphite, it doesn't burnish very quickly at all. Um, fine pencil work on this paper is fantastic. I did a, I had the A2 pad and I did an A3 drawing on it and I cut it to size. Quite often I do smaller drawings on the bigger paper and actually cut them to size. It keeps the edges crisper, it keeps them sharp. But I did a uh, portrait of a Jack Russell for a gentleman and I used the Worcestershire High White. And this is the kind of results I got with it. I did this drawing predominantly with my supermarket bought HP pencils. Um, the darks, I use Prismacolor, I use Polychromos, um, I used an 8B, I used a 4B. This was before I had my mechanical pencil. So I basically achieved quite a lot of these details on the paper just using a standard pencil. So it was quite an achievement for me. Um, but as you can see, some of the details that I got on this paper were fantastic. And the darks were really dark in places. So it's a great overall paper. You know, I... I know everyone gives their recommendations for the stuff that they really, really love, but I would absolutely, definitely recommend giving this paper a try. It's it's sort of an all-rounder for me. It works great with colour pencil. It works great with 
I've even drawn charcoal on it as well, so it, it is a good all round paper, and I can't recommend it enough. And for the final recommendation for papers, I would go with the Canson. Um, like I said just now, I use it a lot. It's one of my favourite papers. Um, they do it in all your standard sizes, A5 up to A1. Um, the good thing I like about this paper is it's more like a card, like a, a cardboard. Um, it doesn't feel like a paper at all. It feels It's very, very thick, it's very, very durable, and it's incredibly smooth. It works with... Kind of like the Worcestershire, it works with charcoal, colour pencil, um, it works with graphite. Um, it's another great all-rounder. But the reason why I have this one as well as the Worcestershire is simply on thickness. Even though it's a 200 GSM, same as the other paper that I use, it feels thicker. I don't know why, it just feels a higher quality paper. Um, I don't know whether it's just my mind playing tricks on me. But holding them separately, together, in different hands, there is a difference. It is thicker, and I like that feeling. It feels more professional. It feels more. It feels like you're not going to rip through it, because quite a lot of people, you know, when they're starting out and they and they buy a pad and it's say like a ninety or a seventy, or even a hundred and twenty GSM, and they just, they say, "Well, I ripped a hole in it, or it's burnishing too quickly." You know, it's just. It feels a very professional paper. Um, I did a drawing called Last Blood. Um, it's up on the screen now. I used the Canson paper for this drawing. Um, I It was an A3, but I did it on an A1. So I did have a lot of paper wastage. But I, and like I said before, I did that so I could have the sharper edges after cutting. Because uh, I like to cut my work at the end. Um, but it doesn't burnish at all. It takes loads and loads of layers. And when I don't know if, if you know, but when people explain, oh, it burnished. Um, burnishing is where you flatten the tooth of the paper. And it doesn't take any more graphite. Um, if you zoom in and you look at a piece of paper, it will kind of look like, like this. That is under 100 times magnified. That is a standard piece of paper. And to look at it, it looks like something from some kind of horror movie or or something that Frodo would be climbing over in Lord of the Rings. It just looks, it just doesn't look like paper at all. But that is 100 times magnified. And when you say the tooth of the paper it takes the graphite, it sort of, when you burnish the paper and you press too hard, too quick, you flatten all of those tiny abrasions and those tiny imperfections on the paper. So then the paper has nothing else to take the graphite or to hold onto the graphite with. So when you burnish it and, and the paper goes all shiny and you think, oh, why can't it go darker? Why, why is it not going any darker? It's because you flatten the paper and you can't apply any more any more depth. You know, but this the paper of the Canson one, it is it is absolutely fantastic. So I definitely recommend it. Um Yeah, so out of the four, um I've used I've used all four. Uh, the Strathmore two three four five hundred series i've only had a limited experience with them so i would like some feedback on that if possible is the money is the price tag worth the paper um i know a gentleman called adam o mentioned him again um he uses strathmore 400 um he gets on really well but he says it's fantastic for charcoal um anybody use graphite on it a lot let me know i would like to know your opinions on the paper um and then maybe next time I might, I'll pick up a paper pad myself and I'll give it a go and see how we get on. Um, I might do a more in-depth review on the Strathmore because I am still a little bit hazy on on it. I don't really know the quality difference compared to other papers that I use, so it's definitely a video that I'm looking forward to doing. So I will be doing that in the future. But until then, have fun, keep drawing, keep improving, um, and choose the right paper. Don't settle for second best. If you have to pay an extra £10 or an extra $10, then do it. Because it's going to improve your work. Please like, share and subscribe. And I will see you on the next video.